so before i show you the assignment in friction i would like to discuss problems i mean based on the special case i have discussed in the last class so i advise you to become familiar with the special case which i have discussed at the end of the previous class that is where one block of mass m1 rests on another block of mass m2 which rests on a smooth floor so i am going to discuss a problem based on the special case so after discussing this problem then i will be showing you the assignment in friction so that you first i will not be discussing the solutions of all the questions in the assignment but i will be showing you the questions one after another which you can try it yourself come on look at the problem on the screen problem 4 as been numbered from beginning i will once read out the problem consider a block of mass m1 equal to 1 kg which rests on another block of mass m2 equal to 2 kg which rests on a smooth horizontal floor the coefficients of static and kinetic friction between the two blocks are us equal 0.3 and uk equal 0.2 respectively find the magnitudes of accelerations of blocks and friction between the two blocks when a horizontal force of first part of question 6 newton is applied on m2 second part of question f equal 10 newton is applied on m2 third part of question f equal 4 newton is applied on m1 and fourth part of question f equal 5 newton is applied on m1 i have take g equal 10 meter per second square come on copy down the information i am going to discuss this question now so in the previous class i have discussed one special case a block of mass m1 when it rests on another block of mass m2 and which rests on smooth horizontal floor if you ask the question of static friction between the two blocks then if horizontal force f is applied on the lower block as explained here it's the same calculation it's explained in the special case in the previous class as it is you have to repeat in case this problem is given in the board exam in case this similar problem is given in the board examinations or one of the board exam for intermediate public exam or 11th class exam then you have to repeat the working i have discussed in the previous class for last special case as it is so but here i am going to directly use the conclusion of the previous class discussion to solve this problem already explained and discussed and given you shown you the notes also the two blocks move together with same acceleration a equal f by m1 plus m2 if the horizontal force applied in the lower block is less than or equal to new s into m1 plus m2 that means the max into g the max horizontal force which can be applied on the lower block such that the two blocks move together is new s into m1 plus m2 into g so in this problem we are given that new s equal to 0.3 m1 is given to be 1 kg m2 is given to be 2 kg and g is given to be 10 meter per second square that will be equal to 9 newtons that means the two blocks move together with the same acceleration if the horizontal force applied on the lower block i mean the magnitude of the horizontal force applied on the lower block is less than or equal to 9 newtons so in the first part of the question f is given as 6 newtons which is less than 9 newtons that means here f is 
clearly less than nu s into m1 plus m2g. Therefore, both the blocks move with the same acceleration. Magnitude of acceleration of m1 I denote by a1, magnitude of acceleration of m2 I denote by a2, both will be same. Magnitude of acceleration of each mass can be denoted by a, which will be equal to f by m1 plus m2. Here f equal to 6 newtons, m1 is 1 kg, m2 is 2 kg. So, magnitude of the acceleration of each block is same, that is 2 meter per second square. That is one of the answers for first question. You are asking each question, you are asked to find magnitude of acceleration of each block and magnitude of friction between the two blocks. As explained, when a horizontal force is applied on the lower block, the horizontal force applied on the lower block tends to move the lower block of mass M2 towards right relative to the upper block of mass M1. So, frictional force between M1 and M2 opposes the relative motion between the two blocks. That means frictional force on M2 by M1 opposes the motion of M2 relative to M1. The horizontal force applied in the lower block tends to move the mass M2 towards right relative to the mass M1. Therefore, force of friction on M2 by M1 acts towards left side. The force of friction in this case will be the static friction. So, the static frictional force exerted on M2 by M1 acts towards left side. So, in Newton's law, the static frictional force on M1 by M2 acts towards right. When the two blocks move together with a common acceleration with no relative motion between them, and the friction between the two blocks can be called as static friction. So, with respect to the laboratory frame of reference or stationary observer on the ground, this, the only force acting on M1 in the horizontal direction is the force of static friction on it by M2. So, resultant force on M1 equal to the magnitude of the static friction force. Magnitude of the resultant force on M1 is equal to the magnitude of static friction. From Newton's second law that you can write. M1A. Mass M1 is given to 1 kg, the acceleration is 2 meter per second square. So, in the first part of the question, magnitude of acceleration of the each block is 2 meter per second square. The magnitude of the static friction between the two blocks is 2 newtons. Coming to the second part of the question, In the second part of the question, the horizontal force applied on the lower block is 10 newtons. That means in this case, horizontal force applied on the lower block is more than 9 newtons. That means the horizontal force applied on the lower block is more than nu s into m1 plus m2g. Therefore, the two blocks do not move together with the same acceleration. As I discussed earlier, the two blocks move together with a common acceleration A equal F by M1 plus M2. Only when the magnitude of horizontal force applied in the lower block is not more than nu s into M1 plus M2g. So, here F is more than nu s into M1 plus M2g. Therefore, there will be slipping between the two blocks. Therefore, the type of friction that exists between the two blocks will be the kinetic friction or sliding friction. So then, but directs are the kinetic friction. So when F is more than 9 newtons, M2 moves towards right relative to M1. The mass M2 moves towards right relative to the upper mass M1. Therefore, for the kinetic friction on M2 by M1 acts towards left side. So if you draw a separate three body diagram for M1, showing only the forces in the horizontal direction.
if k is a magnet of kinetic friction between the two blocks. So the weight m1 g, of course, acts downwards, which is balanced by normal reaction force on m1 by m2. I show a separate diagram showing the force acting on M2, but I am showing only the forces in the horizontal direction because the two blocks do not have any accelerator in the vertical direction. So the y component or vertical component of accelerator of each block is zero. So I show a separate diagram showing the forces acting on M2, but I show only the forces in the oriental direction because net force on M2 in the vertical direction is zero. So I'm not drawing drawing a detailed free body diagram for M2 because I have already discussed this case in detail in the previous class. I'm just showing you the forces in the horizontal direction which act on M2. Here capital F is R and force applied on M2 which acts towards right the force of kinetic friction on M2 by M1 acts towards left side because there will be slipping between the two blocks. M2 moves towards right relative to M1. Therefore, the force of kinetic friction on M2 by M1 acts towards left side. From Newton's third law, the friction force on M1 by M2 acts towards right side. But friction force on M1 should be indicated a free body diagram for M1. The friction force acting on M2 should be indicated a free body diagram for M2. So, resultant force on M1 in the horizontal direction is equal to magnitude of kinetic friction between the two blocks. So, magnitude of the friction between the two blocks the kinetic friction which is given by nu k to n1. n1 is a magnet of normal reaction between the two blocks which can be written as m1g. Here nu k is given to be 0.2 and m1 is given to 1 kg g 10 meter per second square. So magnet of kinetic friction between the two, two blocks is 2 newtons. So that is one of the answers because in each question you have to find magnitude of the friction between the two blocks and acceleration of each block. Now to find acceleration of each block you have to apply Newton's second law for each block separately. Resultant force on M1 is equal to magnitude of kinetic friction on M1 by M2 that is equal to from Newton's second law M1 to a1 fk can be turned new k into m1 g that is equal to m1 a1 so magnet of accelerator of m1 will be equal new k into g so magnet of accelerator of m1 will be equal to point 2 into 10 meter per second square so 2 meter per second square is the magnet of accelerator of M1. That is one of the answers. Coming to the mass M2, resultant force on M2 is equal to F minus Fk. From Newton's second law, that must be can be equated M2 into A2. Where A2 is a magnet of acceleration. I am continuing the calculation to the left side. Here F is given to be 10 Newtons. Magnet of kinetic friction we have calculated here that is 2 newtons. That is equal to mass m2 and acceleration m2 is 2 kg. So 10 newton minus 2, 8 newton by 2 that will be 4 meter per second square. So magnet of acceleration of m2 just after the force is applied 4 meter per second square. Of course these accelerations hold good until the two blocks get separated from each other. That means we are done the calculation for the situation just after the force is applied. 
So mag of accelerator of m1 is the second question, 2 meter per second square. Mag of accelerator of m2 is 4 meter per second square. And mag of kinetic friction is 2 newtons. So these are the answers. So we want to copy the solution of the problem. Come on, copy down the solution of the problem. You finish copying, then you can next try to go through the I will be discussing the next uh, solutions for the third and fourth questions. In case you need more time to copy the solution of the problem, you can take a pause and take your time. So in the questions three and four, The Haryana force is applied in the upper block of mass M1. As I discussed earlier in the previous class, that when a Haryana force is applied in the upper block of mass M1, the two blocks move together with a same acceleration the magnet of the Haryana force applied on the upper block is less than or equal to m1 plus m2 into nu s m1 g by m2 that means the maximum Haryana force which can be applied in the upper block of mass m1 such that the two blocks move together is m1 plus m2 into nu s into m1 g by m2 here m1 is 1 kg m2 is 2 kg so m1 plus m2 will be 1 plus 2 kg nu s equal to 0.3 g equal 10 meter per second square So that will be nine by two or four point five newtons. That means the two blocks move together with the same magnitude of acceleration in the same direction. The horizontal force applied in the upper block is less than or equal to four point five newton. The third part of the question. The horizontal force applied on the upper block has magnitude 4 newton, which is less than 4.5 newton. That means F is less than M1 plus M2 into nu S into M1 g by M2. Therefore, the two blocks move with same acceleration. So, magnitude of accelerator of M1 will be same as magnitude of accelerator of M2, magnitude of accelerator of each mass denoted by A, which is equal to F by M1 plus M2. So, F is given to 4 Newton here, M1 equal to 1 kg, M2 equal to 2 kg. So, magnitude of acceleration of each mass will be 4 by 3 meter per second square. So, when horizontal force applied on M1, then the frictional force on M1 by M2 acts towards left side. The force of friction on M1 by M2 acts towards left side. The horizontal force is up applied on the upper block of mass M1 in this case, which tries to move the mass M1 towards right relative to M2. So therefore, force of friction on M1 acts opposite to the horizontal force applied on M1, acts towards left side. So frictional force on M1 by M2 acts towards left side. 
फ्रॉम न्यूटन थर्ड लॉ फ्रिक्शन फोर्स ऑन एम वन बाय एम टू एक्ट टूअर्ड्स लेफ्ट साइड एंड द फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स ऑन एम टू बाय एम वन एक्ट टूअर्ड्स साइड so action reaction forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction so here i have drawn separate diagram showing the forces acting on m1 in the horizontal direction here i have drawn separate diagram showing the forces act force acting on m2 in the horizontal direction the only force which acts on m2 in the horizontal direction in this case is the frictional force on it by the upper block of mass m1 that means the mass m2 accelerate towards right due to the frictional force on it by m1 so uh, when the two blocks move together with a common acceleration with no relative motion between them then this friction can be called as static friction so magnitude of the resultant force on m2 Is equal to magnitude of static friction. Magnitude of resultant force on M2 is same as the magnitude of static friction on M2 by M1. So M2 is equal to that is equal to product of its mass and acceleration. Here magnitude of acceleration same for both the blocks which is denoted by A. So here M2 is equal to 1 2 kg. The magnitude of acceleration is 4 by 3 meter per second square. Therefore magnitude of friction between the two blocks in this case is 8 by 3 newton. Therefore, in third part of the question, the magnitude of acceleration of each block is same, is 4 by 3 meter per second square, and magnitude of force of friction between the two blocks is 8 by 3 newton. Coming to the fourth part of the question, in the fourth part of the question, the horizontal force of magnitude 5 newton. is applied on m1 which is more than 4.5 newton the two blocks move together with the same acceleration as i discuss if f is less than or equal to 4.5 newton that means the maximum horizontal force which can be applied on m1 such so that both the blocks move together with the same acceleration is 4.5 newton but in the last portion that is the fourth part of question the horizontal force of magnitude 5 newton is applied on m1 which is more than 4.5 newton therefore the two blocks do not move with the same acceleration after the application of the force so m1 slips on m2 after the application of the force so m1 slips on m2 so motion of m1 relative to m2 will be towards right so force of kinetic friction on m1 by m2 will be directed towards left side and force of friction on m2 by m1 will be directed towards right but the fri this friction in this case will be the kinetic friction so magnitude of kinetic friction between the two blocks is equal to product of coefficient of kinetic friction into magnitude of normal reaction between the two blocks so normal reaction on m1 by m2 as we discussed in the past can be it has magnitude m1 g So magnitude of kinetic friction between the two blocks. Mu k is given to be 0.2. M1 equal to 1 kg. G is 10 meter per second square. So magnitude of kinetic friction between the two blocks is 2 newtons. So applying the second law for each block separately. So magnitude of the resultant force on M1. is equal to resultant of forces in the horizontal direction okay plus the magnitude of horizontal force applied on m1 which acts towards right small f represents the magnitude of friction on the block of mass m1 directed towards left side so magnitude of resultant force on m1 will be f minus fk now from newton's equal law magnitude of this resultant force on m1 can be called product of its mass and magnitude of its acceleration magnitude of horizontal force applied on m1 is 5 newtons magnitude of kinetic friction is 2 newtons 
the mass m1 is 1 kg therefore magnitude of acceleration of m1 will be equal to 3 meter per second square that is one of the answers so next to find acceleration of mass f2 we'll apply newton's second law for the mass f2 so magnitude of the resultant force on m2 is equal to fk the only force which acts on m2 in the horizontal direction the force of kinetic friction exerted on it by the upper block from newton the law magnitude resultant force on m2 is equal to product of its mass and magnitude of its acceleration already we calculated magnitude of kinetic friction on m2 equal to newton the mass m2 is 2 kg so can substitute m2 equal to 2 kg on the right side fk equal to newton on the left side So magnitude of acceleration of m2 is get it as one meter per second square. So that's the answer. So in the last part of question, that is the fourth question. So magnitude of acceleration of m1 is three meter per second square, and magnitude of the acceleration of m2 is one meter per second square, and magnitude of friction between the two blocks is two newton. Come on, carry on the solution of this problem. can take a pause and take your own time to copy the solution of the problem see the next problem would like to discuss one more problem in this class so so look at the problem 5 block of weight 100 newton is pushed up along the inclined surface it and back at new s equal to 0.4 and new k equal to 0.3 it means quotient of static friction but the block and the inclined surface 0.4 and quotient of kinetic friction between the block and the inclined surface 0.3 of a fixed inclined plane of angle of inclination theta equal sin inverse 3 by 5 to the horizontal by applying a horizontal force of magnitude 200 newtons g equal to 10 meter per second square find the acceleration of the block so here to find acceleration of the block you must know the magnitude of the frictional force on the block and for that you have to find the magnitude of normal reaction on the block in this case force is applied in the horizontal direction not parallel to the inclined surface if you want you can copy the figure that is shown on the screen i am going to discuss the solution of this problem so let us consider the force acting on the block the first force it acts on the block is its weight mg which acts vertically downwards perpendicular horizontal base of the inclined plane and f is the magnitude of the horizontal force applied on the block by an external agent which pushes the block up along the inclined surface this horizontal force applied on the block is parallel to the horizontal base of the inclined plane this force the horizontal force applied on the block is not parallel to the inclined surface it is parallel to the horizontal base of the inclined plane the pushing force is applied in the horizontal direction the pushing force is may applied in the horizontal direction the direction of the motion of the block is up along the inclined surface the direction of the motion of the block is up along the inclined surface which makes an angle theta to the horizontal that means the pushing force makes an angle theta with the direction of the motion of the block so the direction of the motion of the block up along the inclined surface parallel to the inclined surface we take it as x axis direction perpendicular to the inclined surface as y axis so when the block is moved up along the inclined plane the force of kinetic friction or sliding friction acts down the inclined plane let fk denote the magnitude of kinetic friction of the block 
can resolve the forces mg and f into rectangular components parallel to x and y axis because they are inclined to both x and y axis the component mg cos theta acts perpendicular to the inclined surface of the normal reaction and the component mg sin theta acts down the inclined plane the pushing force can also be resolved in rectangular components parallel to the inclined surface and perpendicular to the inclined surface the component of pushing force with magnitude of cos theta acts up along the inclined surface in the direction of the motion of the block the component of the pushing force with the magnitude f sin theta acts perpendicular to the inclined surface that means both the components f sin theta and mg cos theta act in the same direction opposite to normal reaction to find the magnitude of normal reaction we will find consider the forces along y axis let f i denote the y component of resultant force of block here normal reaction n represent magnitude of the normal reaction force on the block by the inclined surface which is direct along positive y axis the component of the weight mg with magnitude mg cos theta acts opposite normal reaction in the negative direction of axis the component of pushing force with magnitude f sin theta also acts opposite normal reaction therefore y component of resultant force on the block is n minus mg cos theta minus f sin theta the y component of acceleration of the block is zero so y component of resultant force of the block is also zero so magnitude of normal reaction of the block with inclined plane will have magnitude mg cos theta plus f sin theta the weight mg of the block is 100 newtons cos theta is 4 by 5 the pushing force has a magnitude of given that the magnitude of the pushing force applied on the block is 200 newtons the problem you are given the weight mg of the block as 100 newtons and g is 10 meter per second square so mass of the block is 10 kg sin theta is 3 by 5 so from that you get cos theta equal to 4 by 5 in the question of kinetic friction between the block and the inclined plane is given to 0.4 and question of kinetic friction is given to 0.3 f is given to be 200 newtons so you can simplify this for calculate for the magnitude of the normal reaction the so magnitude of the normal reaction of the block will be equal to 200 newtons so the block begins to move up along the inclined plane and the the component of pushing force which magnitude of cos theta which tends to move the block up along the inclined surface is more than some of the magnitudes of the component mg sin theta and limiting friction so limiting friction will be equal to new s into n sorry not f y is not equal to 200 newton magnitude of normal reaction is 200 newtons f y is zero so magnitude of the limiting friction is new s into n that is 0.4 into 200 newtons that is 80 newtons so block begins to move up along the inclined plane if f cos theta is more than new s into n plus mg sin theta 
the block begins to move up along the inclined plane. With an acceleration, if f cos theta is more than mg sin theta, that means to move up, to move up along the inclined plane, f cos theta has to be greater than. Of course, this part of the discussion which I am writing on the right side is actually not needed to answer the given problem. Only for general discussion I am doing here because you must know how to find the minimum force needed to move the block up along the inclined plane. So, cos theta is 4 by 5, mg sin theta, if you substitute mg equal 100 newtons, sin theta equal to 3 by 5, limiting friction is 80 newtons. So, the block begins to move up if f phi is greater than, take 4 by 5 to the right side, 5 by 4 into 60 plus 80, 140 newton. So, the block begins to move up along the inclined plane. If f phi is greater than 5 into 35 newtons, or f phi is greater than 175 newtons. So, the block begins to move up along the inclined plane with an acceleration. Only when magnitude of the orient of the the block is more than or at least equal to 175 newtons. In the given problem, it will definitely move up along the inclined plane. Therefore, actually this part of the discussion is not needed to arrive at the answer for the problem. But I have done this part of discussion to confirm, to show you that the block begins to move up along the inclined plane. For the given value, the magnitude of the force applied in the block. So, when the block is in motion, magnitude of friction for the block will be equal to cos of kinetic friction, magnitude of kinetic friction is equal to nu k into m. Here, nu k is 0.3, magnitude of the normal reaction we calculated here 200 newtons. So, magnitude of kinetic friction of the block will be 60 newtons. F y is 0, when F y is 0, y component of Resultant for 0, resultant for the block is equal to fx, means the resultant of forces acting in the x direction. The component of pushing force with magnitude of course it acts along positive direction of x axis. F k represents the magnitude of kinetic friction which acts in the negative direction of x axis. The component mg sin theta also acts opposite to the direction of the motion, in the negative direction of x axis. So, here f is given to be 200 newtons, cos theta is 4 by 5, fk equal to 60 newtons, 8 mg is 100 newtons, theta is sin theta is 3 by 5. So, magnitude of the resultant force of the block, you get it as 40 Newton. From Newton's second law, magnitude of the resultant of all the external forces acting on the block will be equal to product of its mass and acceleration. So, here magnitude of the resultant force of the block is 40 Newton, mass of the block is equal to 10 kg. Therefore, magnitude of the accelerator of the block, you will get 4 meter per second square. So, answer is 4 meter per second square. Come on, copy down the solution of this problem. So, in the next class, I am going to show you the assignment in friction. So, in the assignment in friction, I will be just showing you the questions up to 31 questions, multiple choice questions. Most of them are simple numerical problems. There are some conceptual or theoretical questions also. I will not be discussing the solutions of the questions in the assignment in the next class. I will be just showing the questions one after another on the screen so that you can start trying those questions yourself. 
first so in the class after the next class i will be giving you the answers so that you can check up your solution answers then the class later i will be discussing the solutions of all the questions in the assignment in case you need more time to copy the solution you can take a pause and take your own time 